Welcome everybody to this presentation about the value of a liberal arts education and of course about the Bellarmine College of Liberal Arts here at Loyola Marymount University. Um, there has never been a better time to study in the liberal arts. And at LMU, you have the opportunity to do that in two ways, side by side and simultaneously. Uh, the first way is through our core curriculum, which all LMU students take. And the second way is by choosing a major in the liberal arts. And so we're gonna talk about that today as you're honing in on your decision about where to go to college and what major to choose if you're ready to choose and you don't need to choose right away. So here are some of the qualities and virtues of a liberal arts education, of studying the liberal arts and of internalizing the values, uh, the intellectual capacities, the sensibilities of the liberal arts. And you'll see certain words in this word cloud might pop out to you because they reflect who you are uh, or who you want to become, or because they're close related uh, to who we are at Loyola Marymount University. So of course you see Jesuit and liberal arts are two words that are so closely associated because a Jesuit education is always traditionally in our heritage and ongoingly in our educational commitments. Uh, a Jesuit education is uh, rich in those liberal arts traditions. But you'll see here uh, intellectual uh, components uh, like understanding. Uh, you'll see operational components of learning like skills and reflection. You'll see about how the liberal arts are animated in relationship to the world through experiences in society and communities. And so the analytical and the experiential uh, come together and then you'll see words that are values. Uh, many of these values relate to intellectual virtues such as ethics, uh, morality, uh, courage, critical thinking, all of those kinds of things. So as you think about a liberal arts education, these are some of the ideas that, uh, that you wanna keep in mind and that you'll use to tell other people why you're choosing a liberal arts degree, uh, why you're choosing to study at a university with such a strong commitment to the liberal arts. So let's talk a little bit about LMU's commitments. Uh, so first of all, the Bellarmine College of Liberal Arts is the heart of LMU. And I've talked about this, uh, I sort of introduced the idea of our core curriculum. And so our Ignatian heritage, our liberal arts traditions and values are manifest for all LMU students through the core curriculum, which is a four year breadth uh, curriculum across disciplines, across domains of knowledge, domains of human experience that every LMU student takes. And it kind of accompanies through your four years, your major, which we, we think of as depth education and your core, which uh, we think of as breadth education and they accompany. Uh, at other universities, you might have what they call gen ed and it will all be introductory courses, our courses uh, get more advanced as you move forward. So it's a, a real accompaniment to the major. All our students take philosophy and theology. All our students take humanities and social sciences courses. All of our students engage in interdisciplinary inquiry around big questions and ideas, uh, big dilemmas about, you know, sort of reconciling and thinking through the um, the relationship between faith and reason, uh, between ethics and justice. And so students will have an opportunity to really engage with the great traditions and, um, and answer with peers, with faculty, and inside yourself, some of the big questions that are perennial questions related to the human experience and related to what it means to become and be fully human in the world. Um, critical thinking and communication skills are takeaways from 
a good college education. And we have integrated opportunities to really deepen uh, these intellectual and operational skills throughout the four-year experience or the two-year experience if you're a transfer student. We always make sure our students have an LMU distinctive education uh, for however long you're here. We want you to be prepared for living lives of meaning and purpose, very aware of who you are, what matters to you, how to talk about that, how to inquire and do research from that point of view, and then how to animate that when you go out into the world. We want to cultivate your leadership potential. Of course, a liberal arts education is always about career adaptability, preparation, for any career track and absolutely the foundations for the kind of adaptability that the economy and the world today will demand of you. And then of course, we want you to be lifelong learners with us. We educators, uh, one of the big commitments we made when we were college students ourselves for most, for, for most of us was we committed to lifelong learning. We, and, and being a, being a teacher, being an educator is one of the best ways to keep learning. Uh, we want to build your capacity for global citizenship. And that means uh, your understanding of your civic responsibilities and how you wanna live those, and also your ability to engage with global communities here in Los Angeles, across the United States and around the world, because that's the kind of world we live in. Uh, everything is transnational. So I've talked about uh, what our education is about. Our students are, are this type of student. And you're obviously looking at LMU because you are too. Uh, asking big questions, uh, having and seeking broader horizons, wanting to be engaged in your education and in your becoming at a deeply personal level in ways that help you see that education is not merely something you're pursuing, but is integrated with who you are becoming. And of course, LMU students generally tend to wanna to make a difference in the world and are already thinking from the time they land up to the time they graduate, how am I gonna make a difference in the world? And our alumni are such an amazing example of how that happens and the alumni engage with our students as mentors, as guides, as role models. Our faculty are top-notch world-class scholars. They're engaged in original research and um, so active in their fields. Uh, they're also very caring teachers who have come to LMU because they're not only wanting to, to be researchers like their doctoral programs at the best universities and PhD granting programs in the country have trained them to be, but they also want to be great educators and they care about undergraduate teaching. And that combination, don't take that lightly. That is a rare quality. Um, our faculty are deeply invested in making sure that you access the high impact learning experiences, those meaningful learning experiences that are gonna be difference making for you, potentially transformational, uh, whether that's in um, finding your intellectual passions or choosing how you want to uh, engage as a student and through internships and other kinds of uh, co-curricular experiences or who you wanna be uh, as as, uh, as you approach graduation and, and often before, our students are already leaders before they graduate. They're already making a difference in the world long before they graduate. And so um, our faculty are really on the ready to connect students to those experiences that help them get the most out of their time in college, but also prepare to and are already engaging in the world as, as scholars, as um, as citizens, as uh, professionals. Uh, so the opportunities that you'll have to integrate your intellectual passions with your career goals, your, your fuller life goals. After all, college is, is not merely a, um, 
you know, job preparation and our lives are not just work. And so we're preparing for, for professional lives, but we're preparing for fuller lives and immersion in local and global communities, uh, experiential learning like internships and close mentoring experiences like research with faculty, that is all part of it. And we're so excited that you may join us uh, for this kind of education and education that transforms. So let's talk a little bit uh, about what BCLA looks like. Uh, we're a highly ranked college of liberal arts, uh, noted especially for our humanities programs. And that's very much in keeping with the Jesuit education where our core curriculum is always humanities rich because it really has to do with the ways a Catholic imagination and a Jesuit educational heritage imagine what education is for. It's part of helping us get in touch with the human experience and manifest our own full humanity. We have a large number of full-time faculty and most of the courses you'll take will be taught by full-time faculty. Um, and you can see that our graduates have wonderful postgraduate uh, experiences. Uh, uh, high employment statistics or graduate school or postgraduate service. And one of the things that was interesting to me because this is our new data, despite this economic crisis and all of the COVID disruptions and, and so on, our employment and postgraduate outcomes data was almost exactly the same as it was the year before and trending for several years uh, before this. So we have very consistent outcomes for our graduates. We are the largest of the schools and colleges at Loyola Marymount University. And so at any given time, we have well over 2000 students who are seeking their primary degree in BCLA in the College of Liberal Arts and many other students who are business students or engineering students or film students or dance students and so on, who are in the other schools and colleges at LMU, they take a second major in BCLA or at least one minor in BCLA. And so you can see that while we're the largest college of students focusing their studies uh, at LMU, we also teach all the students at LMU. And so your classes will be uh, really filled with students from across the campus, which is exciting because the peer learning environment is such an important part of everything. So what might you study if you come to LMU? Uh, here's a list of our majors and minors. And every time I see this list, I think, oh, well, we have something for everybody. Uh, you'll see that we have um, Bat Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science, BA or BS, in many fields uh, and all the major disciplines. And of course, we have minor programs, which usually are just four or five classes in a number of other areas, most of those interdisciplinary. I know that you'll see at least one thing on this list that you're uh, that you're planning to study or think you might study. When I look at this list, I see at least a half a dozen areas where I might wanna get a major if I had it to do over again, uh, because there's so much exciting to do. Now, uh, some of you might not see something on this list that you're thinking about, but first of all, you wanna imagine that most of the traditional disciplines in the social sciences and the humanities do uh, study the world, uh, the uh, breadth of uh, social and political experience in the US. So oftentimes you can study things uh, in one field that you might not have imagined. And I'll just use an example. So you see international relations here. It's one of our uh, newest and growing majors. And so you think, well, if I want to study something with an international perspective, I should do that. Well, you would study world religions in theological studies. You would study global women's experience and feminist um, theory and insights in women's and gender studies. Uh, classics and archaeology would, would bring you to ancient Greece as well as contemporary Mesopotamian, 
Mesopotamia. An economics major, you're going to study the economies of Europe and Asia and so on. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of ways, there's a lot of roads that lead to your ability to study your interests and your passions. It's, it's not uh, very contained and all of our departments are very interdisciplinary. So faculty are eager to help you imagine what is the course of study I wanna pursue and how can I make sure I have classes in those areas that I wanna either learn particular skills, like I'll use the example of a language or econometrics, right? Uh, or polling. Uh, as well as different areas of the world or di different social phenomena. And so you really can find avenues. If for some reason those avenues are not apparent to you, we do have an individually designed major that uh, students can work together with faculty to create a tailored area of study. So again, something for everyone. Let's talk a little bit more deeply about these categories, the humanities, uh, the social sciences, interdisciplinarity. Let's start with the humanities. These departments, uh, classics and archeology, span English and journalism, history, philosophy, modern languages and literatures, theological studies. These are the departments that associate most strongly with disciplines that we call the humanities. Um, that at the same time, faculty in other disciplines use humanistic approaches, often qualitative, deeply grounded in narrative, in, in experience, uh, in text. Um, but these majors focus on those things, texts and artifacts and narratives. Uh, very much uh, interested in, in asking the big questions and engaging with the great traditions of knowledge that are really part of Western civilization and the entirety of human history and knowledge. Uh, there is a focus often on reading and writing and discussion. Uh, classes are often small and discussion is very vibrant and faculty are very interested in working with students that maybe, maybe you start a project in one class and you wanna keep going with it and a faculty member will help you think, how do you take that project to the next level? Uh, sometimes uh, you may think of, of these faculty as focused on the past and, you know, obviously the great traditions and so on, the great histories, um, but they take a global contemporary perspective and often use digital tools in their teaching. So the study of the humanities is both very historical and very contemporary. So that's the humanities. Let's talk about the social sciences. Uh, here are the social science departments in the College of Liberal Arts, economics, sociology, political science and international relations, psychology and urban and environmental studies. Uh, the emphasis of these departments tends to be on empirical inquiry. Uh, lots of times the methods classes will focus on quantitative methods, but also qualitative methods. So in talking about the humanities, I mentioned Narrative, well, narrative is also part of telling the story of the human experience as it's unfolding in relationship to homelessness or, uh, or education or, or any social phenomenon. So, um, but students are all often interested in and the faculty are doing research in empirical in, uh, inquiry into social phenomena. Uh, our departments are very community engaged, often uh, having partnerships with community organizations in order for students to learn the material and how to apply the tools in relationship to real situations on the ground. That's very exciting, experiential learning waiting for you. Um, they also have tailored internship and study abroad experiences, as do the humanities departments. And um, in the social sciences, so many students do mentored research with faculty, uh, often culminating in publications or conference presentations, and do graduate prepared to do research, whether that research is, is in a graduate program or with a nonprofit organization or in public life, whether it's municipal or state or national, or um, even in a company, research skills are transferable. 
whether those are coming from humanistic methodologies or social science methodologies. So it's very exciting. Now, some of our departments we call interdisciplinary. And interdisciplinary studies arise from uh, areas that uh, develop into uh, standalone departments over time because so many scholars are doing this kind of work. And our departments are African-American studies, Asian and Asian-American studies, Chicana and Latino studies, and women's and gender studies. Now, what I love about interdisciplinary programs is they combine the best of the social sciences and the humanities. And the faculty in these departments some of them may have come from other disciplines in terms of their undergraduate and graduate degrees. And uh, some of them come from humanities uh, research backgrounds or orientations, and some come from social science orientations. So it can be the best of both worlds. These departments tend to have smaller groups of majors, and especially at the upper division, the classes can be very intimate. The community, offered by these departments is really just bar none. Now, I, I would say that about the other departments as well, but they have more people. And so uh, the community has a different feel. This is very close community in these departments. These departments also tend to be those that sponsor so many programs, lectures, uh, film series, and so on. And so for all of LMU students, these departments are producing vibrant cultural programming for everybody's enlightenment and enrichment. It's very exciting. Now, what if you are thinking about coming to college undeclared? I always say, yay, good for you. That's what I did. Undeclared is great. Uh, you might wanna keep your options open. Uh, certainly your core curriculum will allow you to explore by taking classes in a number of disciplines and then you'll feel where, where you're drawn. Sometimes you come to college knowing your passions but not quite how they match up to a degree program. And sometimes you come to college uh, very open-minded and very unsure about what your passions are. And so the core curriculum and the classes you take in your early years uh, and, and really in your first year, a lot of the time, really uh, not only draw you in to areas that you had an inkling you were interested in, but actually turn you on to areas of study you never imagined, but that are just drawing you. And so you should feel open to that. Uh, many students come to college declared, but then change their major that means they were undecided too. So there's no uh, concern about being undecided. You just wanna take advantage of academic exploration opportunities, advising opportunities. And we have both faculty advisors and professional advisors who are on the ready all the time to help you think through. Uh, they can ask you questions uh, to help get at your interests, or you can ask their, them questions and they'll direct you uh, to the best ways to pursue those interests. If you do come to college undeclared, uh, you know, I recommend that in the first year you really try to hone in on some likely interests and that you try to declare your major no later than the fourth semester and that you do so before registration for the next semester begins. And whenever you're declaring a major, if you do it before registration period, that means that uh, you'll be ready when registration comes to hit the ground running. So there's a lot for majors. There's a lot of decisions to be made around that. And I find that uh, in addition to students being undecided, so many of our students are, have, have countless interests. I mean, sometimes it's truly countless. And one thing about minors, which, which are um, not required to graduate, you don't have to do a minor, but a lot of our students do minors because they have companion interests that they want to create a curriculum that interrelate. So we have many students, for instance, who major in psychology and minor in language. 
or for that matter, who major in business and minor in language or philosophy or theology. And so there's so many ways to have combinations. So in addition to all the departments that we have that have majors, they each department has minors as well. We have these additional interdisciplinary minors and there's really something for everyone. And what you'll see here is that these tend to be focused on themes or, or areas of the world and there, there are ways to uh, give your major a special character around, for example, bioethics issues or around a place in the world or around a heritage or around some key goal or interest you have. Um, electives can be double counted for minors and some core also can be double counted for minors. And these allow you to custom your academic program in endless combination. Um, it's fine to use your elective courses as electives in no way that makes sense to anybody but you. So again, you don't have to complete a minor. It's not required for graduation. And you can simply take uh, classes in any of these areas, one or two. You don't have to um, take all five or whatever. So uh, here are some students who really manifest the, um, the best of the liberal arts and who show uh, some of the distinctive qualities of an LMU education. Uh, now, Veronica is, I can't believe she's graduating even next year because she's been so active <laughs> since she's been here. I feel like she's been a senior uh, for three years already uh, because she's done so many high impact learning experiences. Um, she was uh, elected into Phi Beta Kappa um, she won a scholarship through that. She's been in our honors program. Uh, she's done research through our Global Policy Institute. And really we see in her experience how the teacher scholar model brings uh, close mentorship from world-class faculty. That cannot be beat. Uh, students are challenged in a rigorous academic environment, both from uh, really high quality peers and also um, with uh, the faculty who are demanding, but they meet that demandingness with care for students and support for your learning. And so uh, oftentimes you can achieve beyond your own uh, sort of self expectations, which is nice. Um, students can have so many uh, hands on experiences, research, uh, global immersion, community engagement. And through that kind of experiential learning really have the building blocks of, you know, the intellectual, the academic preparation, the theory, the concept, the abstract aspects of learning with the applied and experiential and more integrative aspects of learning. And then you deliver that to employers who really want to see um, that you have problem solving and good skills of inquiry and that you, you're smart and you think well and you have a good work ethic. These are all things associated with a strong liberal arts education. We make sure that all our students have these uh, experiences through often alumni and donor funding so that regardless of your economic means, your financial aid package and so on, we hope you do not have to take on additional debt or um, overcome financial hardship in order to have great experiences, such as going to conferences and presenting your research or having a global immersion or study abroad experience uh, or an internship. And so uh, our alumni are very supportive of your education, making sure that you have the education that, that you want and that we want for you. Uh, here is another student, Tiana. Again, I can't believe she's not already a senior. She's been so engaged. Uh, so she is only a sophomore. Uh, she's already done a major internship with the Chicago Coalition of the Homeless. And that was a remote internship during COVID times in which she not only learned so much that helped her apply her majors in political science and her minor in African-American studies, but through which she contributed to the work of that organization and made a real difference through doing so. 
this kind of community engagement really brings your liberal arts courses together and allows you to apply whether through research or, or service and, and uh, work, uh, how the, um, the liberal arts learning can, can not only be animated in the world through your gifts and talents, but also make a real difference in the world. Um, we, we focus on community partnerships in this work and um, you know, our students are really able to then bring that immersive experience back into the classroom and take then their learning to the next level because they've seen how it hits the ground in the real world. Um, students are working in the public sector, in the private sector, in their internships after graduation. Uh, sometimes people think liberal arts students are, are merely going to be working in nonprofit or education. Uh, liberal arts students work in every sector of the economy at every level and often emerge into leadership. The latest study on college graduates and uh, employee, uh, what employers are looking for in employees once again show that the sensibilities, the areas of study, uh, the academic qualities and how those uh, land up in, in students' abilities and uh, those are the characteristics that employers are looking for. And oftentimes it is articulated by employers in relationship to work ethic, strong research skills, strong writing skills, strong communication skills, and teamwork, ability to work with diverse teams solving complex problems. So the, the, the nature of a liberal arts education maps so directly to those things. Tiana is gonna do great things in the world. Uh, Christina too, an international relations major with two minors. I told you our students uh, do minors. Uh, one is in BCLA in Spanish and the other in public relations, which is in the College of Communication and Fine Arts. Uh, she also did a virtual internship. Our students did not leave any aspect of their educations uh, unrealized uh, only because we were in a global pandemic. The students are so tenacious. And um, her, her work was specifically related to the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's what I'm saying that students are already making a difference in the world before they graduate. Uh, normally, international relations students do a global immersion experience of some kind, but COVID restrictions did not allow Christina to do that uh, study abroad experience, and so she found myriad ways of taking her education global through her internship and uh, through her research. Uh, again, we have alumni and donors who help make sure that students, regardless of means, can have an international component to your education, which is such an important uh, part in taking your education global. So I mentioned the outcomes in that number slide earlier, and here is a little bit of an unpacking of that. Uh, it's not unusual that many of the liberal arts students do go on to graduate school. Our students tend to be academically serious, and often have a particular post baccalaureate licensure or graduate school in mind, uh, graduate or professional degrees, depending upon their interests. Um, in an economic downturn, which we're in right now, uh, similar to when I graduated actually, uh, more students tend to go on to graduate school than might otherwise. Uh, that will pay dividends to society because those students uh, will be ready to contribute at a higher level with more leadership, more professionalism, and so on. Uh, many of our graduates do seek uh, postgraduate service of some kind, Peace Corps, Jesuit Volunteer Corps, uh, Teach for America, things like that. But 96% uh, engaged after graduation in the after the year we've had, that is just impressive by any measure. And, and I'm just blown away by how successful our students are. And again, as I mentioned, they, they work in all sectors, healthcare, sales, real estate, um, manufacturing, uh, on and on. Some of the employers are these. And you'll see uh, so many uh, 
you know, recognizable logos here. Uh, this is just a, a selection to give you an idea. And then the graduate schools that our uh, BCLA grads get into are really the cream of the crop, uh, graduate school and or law school. And so uh, every time I see this list, uh, it, it does my heart good. Our, our students are, again, academically serious. And, uh, and they love learning and oftentimes go on to graduate school and sometimes on to PhDs and professorships and uh, that makes us happy as well. So this is the end of the presentation for now, uh, but there are many ways for you to inquire further. For one, you could go to the program webpage of any of our departments and programs but you can also go to bellarmine.lmu.edu slash advising center and our amazing advising staff will help you find your way, whether that is to a program, to some kind of academic experience, to a faculty member who shares your interests or to a resource to help you explore further. Uh, we're so happy that you are, are uh, choosing LMU. We hope to see you in the fall at LMU. Uh, we're, we're so looking forward to meeting you. And we have every confidence that you will have a great educational experience here at LMU as a liberal arts student. Take good care. <laughs>